The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post and said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was still a kid, I remember uh, an incident in our town. Somebody was caught stealing chicken. <laughs> chicken. And uh, the punishment, punishment was for that chicken to be tied around his neck like a pendant and something written in front at the back, I'm a chicken stealer. <laughs> and he was asked to move around the market for everybody to see. On the one side, yeah, it can be seen as a disciplinary measure, but it's really a crushing measure, measure uh, crush the spirit of that man, because now he is a public sinner, public sinner. Wherever he goes, he is judged, or he is uh, looked at that way, from that perspective. And it would be very difficult for him to regain his reputation and his dignity. Just like what happened to Jan Veljan in the story Le, Le Meserab, he just actually stole a bread for his hungry sister. Then he was punished uh, five years of imprisonment, hard labor. <laughs> and since he attempted to escape, well, additional 14 years, a total of 19 years for stealing a piece of bread for a hungry sister. I'm telling this story because this is the complete opposite to what our Lord Jesus Christ is asking from us and showing us. This is what he showed to St. Matthew, a public sinner. Why? Because he was a tax collector. And tax collectors at that time were known for their over uh, charges. That's why yeah, they are twice condemned by the people. First, for working... Uh, working for the Romans, and that's already a betrayal, and then overcharging, enriching themselves in the process, that's double jeopardy. And that's why they are really hated and considered as public sinners, but not for our Lord Jesus Christ. His attitude is not condemnatory, but saving or salvific, redeeming. He did not only forgive and uh, St. Matthew, but really invited him, invited him to work for the kingdom, for the vineyard. And we can understand the response of Matthew when he was given this trust, this opportunity to, to redeem himself. When he was invited, come, follow me. He stood up and followed Jesus. Of course, it might not be spontaneous, meaning for several days before that, perhaps, he must have heard of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when finally he met him and invited him, he abandoned his former occupation and followed Jesus. So the invitation for us today are two. One is, if we are on the side of Matthew, if we have also done something wrong in life, instead of losing hope, losing faith, dignity, and all, and then begin to feel shy, ashamed, and then guilty, and uh, distance ourselves from God, from the church. The best move for us, if we fall and fail, is to approach the Lord, to have the courage to 
uh, fight for our dignity, for our redemption. Never to lose hope because our Lord made it very clear. I come not to, for the self-righteous, but for sinners. And he really mean it. There's no sin so great that cannot be forgiven, only if we are sorry for it and ask for forgiveness. So this is a very hopeful uh, gospel for us, inspiring story of St. Matthew, a public sinner, but became an apostle. And he wrote, of course, yeah, for uh, one of the gospels, the four gospels. But our invitation is to write also about our Lord Jesus Christ, perhaps not through written words, but through our lives. Let it be a manifestation, uh, an articulation of how merciful God is. And that is our way of saying thank you, gratitude for being forgiven of our sins. That's the first invitation. If we are on the side of the one committing the mistake, but if we are on the side of the one offended, let us also forgive and give chance for the person to redeem himself. And this is what the bishop in the uh, play, yeah, musical play, Le Mesera, did to John Valjean. So he gave him shelter, and after that, he ran away with all the silverwares. <laughs> so after uh, incarcerated for 19 years, he would again be put in prison because of that. But the bishop said when the police caught John Veljan, no, 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 he did not steal the silver wares. I gave it to him. And in fact, he forgot these two candlesticks <laughs> and added, one, uh, added to the items taken by John Veljan. And that changed the man and gave him a chance to redeem himself. So these are the two invitations for us. Both are leading towards redemption. First, if we commit the mistake, have the courage and the humility to be contrite, say sorry, and hope for forgiveness because God is a merciful God. And if we are on the side of the one giving or offended, let us also forgive and give a person chance to redeem himself then all will be well for us, both the sinners and the offended. Amen.